Hey everyone, it's DNT Buzzer here and welcome to another video. Today, I'm going to be doing something different from my past videos. Today, I'm going to be explaining the story of BRM5 or Black Hawk Rescue Mission 5. Now, this story or lore is just in speculation. None of this is confirmed. The creator of this lore just pieced together information from the developers and the updates that came along. This lore is found in the wiki fandom of BRM5 that I will put a link in the description below. If you are new to BRM, definitely check this wiki out because it has all the info you need. So before we jump in, please subscribe and like this video for more BRM content. Okay, let's jump in. Ronagred is a fictional Russian island located within the Bering Sea. This island is heavily based off Adak Island which is actually a real island which is also in the Bering Sea but part of the Adrianov Islands group of the Aleutian Islands in Alaska. This island which was controlled by the Russians had an air base, a fort, and a missile silo. It also had cities and villages and the people of Ronograd living within. Meanwhile, hiding within Ronograd are the Ronograd Liberation Front or the RLF. These members consisted mostly of deserters from the Russian armed forces. While their motive is unknown, many speculate it is about the UN taking freedom away from the Russian citizens in Ronograd and the RLF wanting to take it back. Whatever the reason may be, they are still a terrorist group trying to take control of Ronograd. The Patriots of Democracy or the POD are a separate yet similar terrorist group who, con who support the RLF. The members of the POD consist of corrupt defectors from several intelligence agencies around the world like the CIA and others. While their motive is unknown, it is believed to be similar to the RLF mainly because of the fact that the POD support the RLF. During an unknown time, either during or before Operation Shadow Raid, the two terrorist groups launch an overrun of the island. The Russian forces, overwhelmed with the situation, retreated back to the airbase. The POD and RLF had taken most of Ronograd, sparing the airbase and Sokrania city. The Russian forces had become overwhelmed and requested help from the United Nations in order to liberate Ronograd. A UN joint task force from the most elite counter-terrorism units like the GIGN, Spetsnaz, and many other units across the globe were formed to liberate Ronograd. The Joint Task Force then launched an attack to take back Ronograd city from the terrorists. The fight had taken several days because the BOD even had eight tents to launch a bombing run. After several days of battle, the UN had regained control of Ronograd city and established a UN office within the city. The POD would occasionally attempt to take Ronograd city back with the manpower and equipment, but these attacks were unsuccessful again and again due to the well-trained units of the task force. Because of the control of Ronograd city, they decided to take another step forward by taking Fort Ronograd. Armed with heavy defenses like the anti-aircraft missiles and it being swarmed by PODs, the task force then launched several attacks attempting to regain control which lasted days and both sides suffering intense casualties. The UN finally regained control of Fort Ronograd, making most of the terrorists retreat to their hiding locations. During the liberation of Ronograd city back then, the POD and RLF had been constructing a quarry and a base within said quarry with a lab and an underground tunnel system. This was unknown to the UN and it was believed that they were trying to construct biohazard and chemical weapons. After the events of Ronograd City and Fort Ronograd, reports started coming in about howling sounds coming from the forest. The chemical weapons became confirmed to exist and are stated to be working, making people into zombies, which worries the UN. A team is sent to check the sounds in the forest only to be found to be attacked by zombies. These zombies, unlike before, are much more aggressive and prove to run as fast as a jeep. Despite the horde of zombies rushing in, within the help of air support and reinforcements, it becomes day and the zombies get dissolved. The chemical weapons were then found to be in the possession of the RLF in trucks. At the end, it is found that the RLF and the POD have possession of chemical weapons and nuclear equipment. 
This is where the lore ends, unfortunately. When BRM updates the game, I'm sure there are much more to come out, and it even looks like there's going to be a nuclear war. But this is all in speculation and not confirmed yet. This is found in the wiki fandom of BRM5 that I will put a link in the description if you want to read. But other than that, thank you all so much for watching the video. I hope you all enjoyed learning the story of BRM5. And if you did, please leave a like and subscribe to my channel for more BRM content. I hope you all have a great day and I'll see you in the next one.